Hey guys, it's Tom here, and today we have another unboxing where the package is so large that I actually can't fit it in the frame, so let's just open it right up. So as you can see, we have a lot of stuff here, which of course was sent to me to review by the wonderful Daily Puzzles. So thank you so much to them. And you can check out their website for these cubes or any cubes with the link in the description. First of all, you might've seen this on my Instagram already, but these Daily Puzzles bags are super nice. Like honestly, in my opinion, they are probably one of my favorite bags you can get. They're very spacious and a nice material. So check them out. And now I wanna get into the first couple of things in this package, which is the Maylong Mega Minx and Gan's new cube display stand. <laughs> that is so cool. So we just have these two parts and you want to slide this in here and it makes this little contraption that spins. Also this little dial changes it from like a really oh smooth, smooth spin or you can go like this and it'll have more of a mechanical feel. That sounds so good. Listen to that, guys. <laughs> yeah, it may be another useless contraption from Gan, but I like it. <laughs> Is it just me or does this box feel like six years old? Oh my God. What is this? It looks weird, it feels weird. The only positive thing I can say about it is that the size is nice. There's not too much resistance on the turns, but it's locking up a lot. The grip feels really strange. The performance is just not there. All I can say is it's straight out of the box. Moyu, this is not it, man. This is not it. Okay, next let's take a look at the YJ Square One. I love like everything in the MGC series, so hopefully this is good. This is me doing my first square one solve in like a year. I'm not very good at square one. I haven't solved one in a while. I still remember, but it's very basic. However, this square one does seem to turn pretty well. I think it's about in the mid range of price. However, this feels like it definitely could be a good flagship contender if you set it up. I'm not a square one pro, so you'll have to go and see other people's ideas. But uh, so far, this feels really nice. And if I were to do square one, this would probably be my main. Next, we have Chi's new X-Men Ambition 4x4. Oh no, I'm getting Volk 4 vibes. I do not like this. I believe off the top of my head, this cube is about, you know, like 30 US or 40 Australian. So it's definitely up there as a flagship. And let's see how it turns. Oh, it's really greasy. <laughs> This turns really nicely. I would not say this feels at all like the Volk 4. It also, it kind of reminds me more of the old Wuchwei. It's very light. This is definitely even lighter than the non-magnetic Wuchwei used to be, but that kind of makes it feel a bit cheap. I don't know. I think it's too light maybe for me personally. I don't think I'm too put off by the cheap feeling as long as it turns well. And right now this does seem to be performing really well. I don't know, the M layers are a bit locky. I probably could loosen it. The tensions are a bit off and maybe give it some lube and it does feel really nice, I will say that. Yeah, I don't think this has any other gimmicks. It's just a nice light, pretty good performing 4x4. I'll have to test it out and uh, get back to you with what I think. Okay, now for the GAN 251M Air Pro. There are three versions of this, the Air, the Air Pro, and the Air Leap. Some different colored GES nuts for the 2x2. And bam, let's see how this goes. This is a very loose sort of spammy two by two. I'm not sure if I like it. I mean, obviously I like the turning. Uh, it feels really nice, but generally for me and a lot of people more stable or like controllable two by twos are really nice. It reminds me of like the old like Cyclone Boys two by twos that were so loose. Uh, obviously this performance is really nice. I'll probably go in and put whatever nut is a bit tighter than this because it is a bit loose. Oops. I don't see myself using this too much, especially not in a competition, uh, but we'll see. Not a terrible 2 by 2 from Gen. Okay, next I'm very excited to get into the new Speedstax Gen 5 timer. Okay, unfortunately I can't get the whole mat in the frame, but it extends another, you know, three inches on each side. So it's quite long. Um, and check this out. I really like how this, instead of sliding on, clicks in. That is really cool. I actually got the right batteries this time. Okay, well, uh, let's switch on and see what happens. 
Okay, I'm on four pad mode. If you don't know, there's two modes and basically for speed stacking, which this was originally made for, uh, they want you to use your thumbs and your fingers. You have to stop and start with those four points of contact. However, in cubing, that's not gonna be a thing. So we can hold this button down for five seconds. And now we're in two pad mode. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and do a quick solve. I think some of the upset people in the community were kind of overreacting. Like it's the same timer basically, although it might look shorter, it might look fatter. It's hard to notice this difference because let's be real. Most people when they use a gen three or four, they put their hands as close to the middle as they want anyway. You don't need your hands out here. Like you're going for the cube in the middle. So I actually think the ergonomics of this is quite nice. Uh, maybe I can see if you have big hands, they might hang over a bit. I don't know. In my opinion, if they bring these into comps, it's good. I also just want to test that when I stop this, could I accidentally reset it? No. Oh! Speed stacks, good job. It looks like it won't let me accidentally turn it off or reset it instantly. So if I went to stop the timer and I press these while I stopped it, Hey, that is really nice. So even though these buttons aren't in the way as much as the old one, it's still possible to hit them. So that's good that they've programmed it so that these things shouldn't be a problem. But yeah, I do really like this timer. The mat's nice. I guess I'll be doing some comp simulation on this soon. And finally, the most exciting thing today is the new Chi X-Men Tornado V2M 3x3. Very nice Chi with the red. I like that. This bag is so different. So pretty much every other cube bag, like the Daily Puzzles ones or the GAN ones are some sort of fabric or felt, but this, it's some sort of synthetic or plastic material. I'm not quite sure, but whatever it is, it's definitely water resistant, if not waterproof. So actually that could be cool for your cube. Also, I do like this little screwdriver, which has some extra heads in it. That's really cool. Okay, so here it is, the X-Men Tornado V2. So the main draw of this is that it's at like a sort of low to medium tier price. However, it has 125 different combinations, I believe, of how you can customize it to make it, you know, feel different. So let's try it out. Do you guys hear that? It's so smooth and quiet, oh my. To some extent, it has this sort of GAN feeling. Uh, maybe it kind of looks like it as well, but uh, it's very smooth. Corner cutting, like on whatever setting this is, is uh, not that great. But this is just only out of the box, considering there's 125 different customizations. The setting doesn't seem very forgiving. So let's just have a quick play around with it right now. As you can hopefully see on the edges here, we have this little five point system that you can spin around on the edge magnets. It seems as though the stock is on three, so I'm just gonna put them all up to four so they're a little bit stronger. Oh, and I just realized I was actually on the Chinese side. <laughs> With this harpoon head of the screwdriver, we can go in these holes. When you turn counterclockwise, you're adjusting the axis distance. And when you turn clockwise, you're adjusting the spring tension. So as we go higher on the axis distance, it's gonna be tighter and higher on the spring tension increases the tension of the springs. The default for these are also three and three. So I'm gonna try by putting them both down to two and see if that loosens the cube up a bit. So this is relatively easy. I'm gonna go in and turn clockwise until my green two lines up with the top. You can't really see it, but there's a bit of a groove on the center cap and then go in again and turn anti-clockwise until also the hole shows two. So you can see two and two and we know both settings are on the same. I was kind of skeptical because it seemed like such a confusing system, but once you figure out how that works, which is relatively simple, that did not take long at all. Okay, that feels so much better already. Wow. I know I'm generally pretty positive about cubes. However, this honestly feels amazing. Like this is a $25 cube. Am I dreaming? It feels so nice. I honestly thought the customization was a massive gimmick. And you know, I could still be wrong. Maybe this cube isn't that great, but just turning it right now, I could see myself using this. Absolutely gonna be playing around with this and bringing you guys a review on it as soon as I can, because I do really like the turning of this. So um, yeah.
that's about it. So thank you all for watching. That's pretty much all I have to say on these cubes. Thanks again to Daily Puzzles who sent them out. Go check them out and you can buy any of these cubes with the links in the description. Other than that, you can definitely expect a video on the tornado coming soon and possibly the ambition we'll have to see and some other exciting stuff. So stay tuned. And other than that, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.